Do you guys think that they give? Uh, do you think it's right that they give Pettis the Ferguson fight? I don't think it's going to be even remotely close. Pettis has no chance. Many other options for Ferguson, right? Um, what other options? Like, mm. when yeah, give us some at, options. Yeah, like Showtime. Uh, Pettis is coming off a win, right? So I just opened up the rankings here because I may have seen that question. <laughs> um, so when you look down through it, like I think the only option really is. Um, Kevin Lee, perhaps? Yeah. That, that probably I makes think, the most sense, that fight. Yeah, but he only fought him. He only fought Tony Ferguson mm. for the t- for the interim, the yeah. interim title. Um, so he lost that a fight ago. So what, he gets a win over Edson Barboza. He gets Tony Ferguson again. Is mm. is it too quick of a turnaround? So that would be my, that's probably be my one and only, yeah, maybe that. Because if you look at like Eddie Alvarez coming off a loss, Chandler called him out for his next fight in Bellator. So that looks like I don't think there's smoke without fire there. You know, Gaethje only fought last night, or obviously last night, last weekend. So coming off a win. When you look down the rest of it, like Poirier uh, is already fighting um, Diaz. So you have the only other top 10 guys available yeah. is Rajan Aloy Quinta, who's coming off a loss, and James Vick, who's coming off a loss. So realistically, like looking at, at the top 10, Pettis is ranked eighth. This is must say is a uh, topology, but Pettis is, is, is coming off eighth. Like I, I think it's, I think, you know, Tony Ferguson continue fighting, not coming off an injury. I agree with it that Pettis has absolutely no chance coming in against Tony Ferguson. Yeah. Um, See, I don't know. I don't know about that. An, coming off a knee injury yeah, and coming off the injury he had, you know, Pettis has been active. Do you know yeah. what I mean? He has been active. Um, so I will be interested to see what, what type of, you know, the win over Chiesa was fine, um, whatever, like he lost to, to, to Miller, but like, uh, sorry, to Dustin Poirier, but like he's been active enough, he he, he almost had that title fight you know, against Khabib. That almost happened. Do you know what I mean? So you're talking about a guy who almost stepped up on short notice to take on Khabib. So realistically, I don't have that much. I was surprised when I seen it, but yeah. it was more when I looked into the rankings. I don't have that much of an issue with it because top ten, the only other guy is Kevin Lee, and they just fought, and he yeah. just beat Kevin Lee. So. I agree with that. Like, who, who else is there for him to fight? And is, mm. even from Tony Ferguson's perspective, if you look at that fight, if you think Tony Ferguson is a big uh, favorite in that, which I, I'd assume he is, and I, I would favor him for mm. sure. But like Tony Ferguson will be coming in saying, "Okay, I'm a big favorite. I'm coming back from injury." And Pettis is a big name. Pettis isn't a small yeah. name. Like, if you're taking yeah. that top ten, he's on a box of Weedos for God's sake. He's on a box of Weedos. Um, but if you look at the top ten in that division. And Ferguson has a pick. I think he likes the Pettis fight because of the name that Pettis mm. still has. Like, and it's probably yeah, an easier fight than a lot of other guys. Like mm. Justin Gaethje. I know Gaethje was matched at the time, but like you don't want to fight Justin Gaethje on, on your way back from injury. So I think he it's can come a, back as, he can come back as well. He had to. He was the interim champion, and he comes back if exactly. he beats Pettis. If he yeah. beats Pettis, he go. I'm, I'm the interim champion, and I beat a former champion. Yeah. So it's it's probably like he's looking at himself here for fights. Like Khabib Connor is going to happen. Doesn't matter who wins that fight for this conversation. Tony Ferguson is putting himself in the best possible position to get a crack at the next champion. And by fighting Pettis and beating Pettis, if he does, that's I think the bigger thing because unless Khabib absolutely destroys Connor and Dustin Poirier beats Diaz, you could argue Poirier getting Khabib, right? But if if things happen differently. Ferguson, you know, a big win over Pettis here, that could put him as the lead runner to get the next title shot. So for me, it's a great fight for Pettis. I think he's getting Tony Ferguson at a great time, coming off an injury as well. And I'm not saying that's coming into the reason why Pettis is taking the fight. Um, like, Ferguson's a wild man. He's an absolute wild man in his techniques. He can he leaves himself open for yeah. um, insane counters and stuff like that. Pettis' is striking is absolutely phenomenal. He's excellent off his back. Pettis as well with submissions. Sometimes, really sometimes he can, sometimes he can get caught. But in the scrambles, anything can happen. You can see like he just beat Pettis. Um, Pettis last win, Kiesa uh, was like a, an arm triangle. Was it an arm triangle? Was it? Uh, it was a triangle. It was a, I can't remember. Fuck, it was an alarm. 
It was a submission anyway. Nacho. Yeah, it was so. So yeah, my point is, Chiesa is known as a ground fighter, and Pettis tapped him out. Yeah. Um. So my, look, I think it's a great fight for both fighters, and makes sense, and I can see why both of them would sign it because it'll really, if Pettis was to be Ferguson, he's just beaten the interim champion. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. My argument as well last week when this was announced was that Ferguson will stand with Pettis, and Pettis has talked about. He, he wanting people to stand with him. Ferguson will go for takedowns as well, but I mean, Ferguson is going to stand with him enough for Pettis at least to have a chance. So that's why I don't think it's, you know, this crazy, ridiculous mismatch is because Pettis yeah. is going to be in his element and he's clearly yeah. probably the more technical striker. Ferguson is obviously a, a wild, just a wild bastard. Like, he'll just do mad shit. Yeah. But like, he's going to have a chance. He's going to, it's not going to be like somebody coming in who's a, who's an NCAA, you know, division one wrestler who's going to take him down and out position him ferguson isn't going to do that if he takes yeah. him down ferguson is going to be looking for submissions which opens it up for pettis as well a couple of comments there as well yeah. which i agree with gray here auto road runner saying on the single points but i do i love the rematch he's not healthy also alex hernandez is a beast and now dan hooker is looking awesome and i think many options like they're outside of the top 10 and i'm not saying it shouldn't happen but like I think if Tony Fergus was announced against, let's say, Hernandez, it'd be seen as either giving him an outsider guy, a dangerous young guy, or even if it was uh, Hooker, they'd be like, ah, he's, you know, Hooker, I think, is currently like 15th, 16th in the rankings. So I'd be like, either giving him a... I'm not saying it'd be an easy fight, but I'd say if that match was made, you'd get people giving out that... Jesus, Sergio Pettis is coming off... Or Anthony Pettis is coming off a win. Why isn't he getting it? You know what I yeah. mean? So, and it make, again, it makes way more sense for Ferguson, I think. I don't think Ferguson wants any of those guys like because they are talented and maybe they are worse matchups for him. You know, you have to mm. give the fighter who... He, he, you know, he just come off that injury. He was an interim champion. I suppose he's going to be looking for a, you know, a decent fight as well. A few people think that Pettis has no chance in it, though. Um, it's insane. I don't get. Yeah. Like, I, don't get me well, wrong. I'm not. I'm not saying what I'm saying is factual. And you know, you know, everyone. Who would you pick though? You, you would pick Ferguson, right? <sighs> like straight away. Like if, the, inj- the injury is a, is a man. If if Ferguson wasn't injured, yeah. But like I just like Tony Ferguson. It, it, it's a weird one because I remember it was a Carl who used to go on about Ferguson all the time. I'm like man, I don't. I just think against the higher guys, he leaves himself vulnerable. And like Pettis is such an elite striker that if he keeps it there, I don't think he will. I think he'll do some sort of crazy roll into a takedown or something. <laughs> being Tony Ferguson, but um, like I, I just I I pick Ferguson in the fight. Yeah. If we were doing picks right now, I'd say Tony yeah. Ferguson. But I'm not underestimating um, um, Anthony Pettis I think I think it'd be foolish to do that like if you look at the catalogue of victories and how he's won even when you go back to Benson Henderson when he beat Benson Henderson Benson was, was considered at the time unbeatable and you know how good he was and he was the next big guy and he was going to be a champion for so long and you know Pettis beat him and beat him well two times and then yeah. obviously we had the, the showtime kick as well so yeah yeah and as well, like after the last fight, we are talking about Pettis because um, a lot of people are saying, "Oh, Showtime is back! Showtime is back!" I'm not on that bandwagon now. I don't think you know he's the same Anthony Pettis that he used to be. No. But it's it's not a fight that really is out of the possibility for him to win. I don't think, especially because he's coming off injury again. If it was Tony Ferguson on that crazy run that you had and he didn't get that injury, you know, Tony Ferguson all day. But I think he has a shot here. 